All right, I'm back. Like an idiot, I reset the iPod, so I see if I can hook this together. Now look at this is I removed the dust cover and the uh, lock. I don't know what you want to call it. The lock thingamajig that keeps this nut tight and a cotter pin. Not in that order, of course. The uh, now we've done this for a thousand years, always done it the same way. But let me bear in mind I'm a third generation mechanic. So the way that we've always done this, and this is the exact same setup that's been on cars built since the 20s. In fact, uh, Conestoga wagons use something very similar to this. Uh, and that's the way we've always done it. What you do is you rotate it while you tighten it up, okay? And you put quite a bit of torque on this thing. All you want, really. You're not going to hurt these bearings. Uh, to give you an idea, when we do this on airplanes, I'm an airplane mechanic, and at night we change tires all the time, wheels. The, the torque we put, the nut's bigger, of course, but we put 400 foot-pounds of torque on this to set it. And that's what we do here. Now, of course, I don't use 400. We don't need to go anywhere near that high. But you take it up as much as you want while you're turning it. Okay? And then you take the torque off to where it's loose. You just finger tight, right? It's not doing nothing. Spin it around. And then you put enough torque on it to create drag. Okay? And this is the way guys have been setting these wheel bearings since day one, okay? Now the problem with that, yesterday I did this four times. Talk about being a professional mechanic, you don't give up just because it don't work out. Now, you should move the top of the brake drum, there's no slack, okay? Theoretic, there's no slack at all. But now, what I did yesterday, I did this exact same job on the other side of the car yesterday, and... Yeah, I know there's no jack stand. I got my foot under here. Good way to lose your foot, I suppose. So the uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to put the tire on here without putting the cover on here. And then we're going to see if you have slack again. And you know what? I'll bet dollar to a donut we do. Now, since this uses lug bolts and not lug nuts, uh, it's kind of tough to get that started. So what I always do is I put this in some index place, okay? Then I set the brake, so this won't turn while I try to hit it with the tire. It's uh, it gets aggravating for sure. So I set the brakes. Now this can't move. Now we can put the tire on. And I don't know about doing this with a camera. Might have to cut this part out. I don't know. Maybe not. And you rotate till you get a bolt. Now since Volkswagens are hub centered, in other words this wheel actually is centered on the hub itself, not on the lug nuts. The lug nuts do not provide centering on a Volkswagen. So the Honda cars, Mazdas, Nissans, they are, they're all centered on the, uh, of course they use lug nuts, so they're centered on the studs. Volkswagens are not. You could if you were brave enough drive a Volkswagen with one lug nut. Of course that would be stupid, but I've seen it done. Two is plenty. Okay, now we got two on here. That's enough to center it, right? Or get it secure. Now, this is what happened yesterday. I don't know if you got... Let me see if I can place this where you guys can see. Or here. This is something I can feel, but you can't there is still movement in that bearing okay same front and back up and down it's nowhere near as much as it was we took a lot of slack out but this is what I was trying to tell you teaching an old dog new tricks the old way that I've been doing it for god four decades doesn't work nothing personal it don't work so this is what we're going to do. We still have a little slack. So what we're going to do is put the correct socket on here. We're just going to keep moving this nut a hairy little bit tighter at a time until we get rid of the movement. I don't know if you guys can hear it. 
still got some. So, spin the tire, put a little more on it, and check. All right, that feels like that got it. All right, so here's, here's the important part of it. My grandfather, my father, I, and all my brothers have been doing this exactly the same way now since the mid-30s, okay? The 1930s, all right? So in this case, it doesn't work. So what do you do? I don't care if you've been doing this for 40 years, if you're doing it wrong, it, you, you need to double check it. That's, and the reason I bring this up is because yesterday I had to redo this job four times or five times until I finally got to the, finally got to the point where it ain't right, it ain't right, you're going to have to do it over. That's all there is to it. In the military, we call this do-over. And the military is not concerned about your feelings. What they're concerned about is are you doing it correctly? Are the results what you're looking for? Well, this is the result we're looking for. There's no slack in it, and there's no, not, you know, I don't know if there's no undo drag or whatever. So, now what we got to do to finish this job up correctly, yeah, I know, this wheel and tire only weighs nothing, man. That's why this car gets 40 miles to gallon. Now what we got to do to finish this job up correctly, we're going to put this locking mechanism on here. Line it up so the hole is where it's got to go. Keep rotating this around. There you go. You got one that's exactly in the center there. There we use new cotter pin. And I don't know if I can do this one hand or not. Kind of stupid to even try, I suppose. If you guys are watching this video and you don't know how to bend over a cotter pin, well, I don't know what to tell you. Uh... I guess I, I could tell you this. There's two ways of doing this that are approved. One is you can put it in this direction. I guess I'll do it this way so that you can bend it. And then you can bend it one way and the other. Trim these. Okay. They don't have to be all that long. Make sure you pick up these uh, pieces that you're trimming off. These do like to stick in your tires. All right, see that one over there? There's a future flat. All right, and take your whatever kind of pliers you got, bend these around, get them where you want them to go. Okay, no big deal. I got to adjust these. But the uh, that's the idea. Once you get these down, the next thing is, before you do anything else, put a dust cap on there, and then test the wheel drum by turning it. Turn the brakes loose and turn it. Make sure that this cotter pin, the head of this cotter pin, or either one of these legs don't touch the inside of that cap It'll drive you nuts you have to take all this back off again okay so I'm gonna bend these down put this cap back on there reinstall the wheel torque the lug bolts to uh, 100 foot pounds which is where they're supposed to be on this car and then uh, we're gonna call this one good go and test drive it so anyway there's your uh, there's your different different deal old dog new tricks man uh, if you've do, been doing it wrong 40 years, you, you just change it. That's all there is to it. So I hope that, you, might, you know, hope this might have helped. If you uh, have got a shimmy, can't do it, or even if even if you haven't, it wouldn't hurt to throw, you know, a jack underneath your car and see how much slack you got in your wheel bearings. Uh, and whenever you change, these are new drums, and new brakes, new bearings. So whenever you do this kind of stuff, check it, make sure. Put the wheel, on, the wheel and tire on it, see if you still got some slack. All right, later.